Okay, welcome back, and we're still talking about FPV, and we're going to be doing some installing tonight. Uh, I was on Alvin Laurie's channel, and uh, I happened to notice a nice little video where he was bench testing the Arju Pilot Mega with uh, some of the same systems I'll be using. And he also had a link to a website, I guess it's his website, and I became interested in this schematic. It has a lot of similarities to what I want to do and has some of the same equipment. So uh, the four systems I'm going to be using are represented in this schematic and uh, the first one I'm going to be doing is the uh, LRS system. Now he is using an AR8000 from Spectrum as the receiver and he's got also a satellite receiver. I'm going to be replacing this with the easy UHF long-range system. So uh, let's get started on that. Alright so the first system I'm going to install is the LRS, the long-range remote control system, which here is the receiver and I've got the piece of coax which is SMA cable. Uh, runs right down the fuselage and the first thing I've done is go ahead and just use some welder's glue to glue in my antenna right here. Next I'm going to hot melt in this 90 degree band here and the rest of the way I'm running the uh, cable through some pieces of straw that I've slit down the middle so that the cable can actually slide in case I want to remove it later I can just cut in here and remove this uh, 90 degree band and slide the cable forward in case I want to add like a dipole antenna or some other sort of antenna down here. So I'll just hot melt it in a little bit. That'll keep it from coming loose. Smooth it out. I don't think I need to smooth it down here too much. It's already in there. Okay. So to add the straws I just go ahead and slit them with a pair of scissors like that and then place them on the cable like that and then just slide it into place and glue it in with some hot melt let's put one more on oh, not a more on we're just going to put one more on okay there we go and we'll just put a little hot melt on that and that'll hold them in okay next I'm just gonna go ahead and velcro in the receiver the LRS receiver so I'm gonna place it right about here good location where I can run the wires to the APM and uh, so I'm going to stick on the hook side of the velcro onto the foam and just put it down just a little bit I'm just going to get me some loop here and uh, just trim it a little bit So let's put some loop on the back of the Easy UHF receiver. And we'll go ahead and just stick that down. And that's probably a pretty good placement for the cable too, because you can see the cable runs along here, makes a hook around, and comes straight to the receiver. So there's no leftover cable. It's just the right length to do the job. No extra cable hanging around. I like that. So I've decided to mount the ESC or the electronic speed control on the outside of the plane to uh, provide cooling and to free up space on the inside of the plane. Uh, I've also kept the wire short here between the ESC and the motor so that the uh, there won't be extra wiring causing uh, EMF emissions 
uh, getting into our radio equipment. Now I've tie wrapped the ESC right here with two tie wraps and this is a Turnergy Trust 55 amp ESC with a built-in SBEC. And you can see where the wires come through right here. So there's the, the wire that goes to the uh, will be going to the APM, normally goes to the receiver. And here are two wires for the battery in which I'm going to solder on this plug. It's an XT60. And the ESC is held on by two tie wraps right here. I'm going to cut the ends off these soon. And a couple pieces of wood. This is a piece of thin plywood just to keep the uh, tie wrap from ripping through the foam. And then I got actually two popsicle sticks here, one on each side glued in for this tie wrap so that it won't cut through or pull through the foam. So that's what it looks like. Let me just turn it around here. And here is where the wires for the battery are where I'm going to be soldering the plug on next. And it makes a nice path for this wire here to go straight to the Ardu pilot. Come right through that hole and plug in the Ardu pilot at the top. All right, I've uh, soldered the XT60 connector onto the ESC wires, so I got that done. I've mounted the back plate on the motor uh, with these four screws using some Loctite, and I've also shortened the wires here and put the connectors back on. And now I'm going to mount the motor onto the motor mount. So there is the motor and the electronic speed control mounted on the plane. And the wires are just long enough to reach the motor. And I'll probably just uh, fasten them down with a tie wrap later right here. Okay, just a quick test. I have the Easy UHF transmitter. Uh, plugged into the radio at the trainer port here. This is my DX8, Spectrum DX8 radio. And uh, it's turned on, powered off a battery here. And over here I have the Easy UHF receiver and it's got the heartbeat light blinking because it's bound. And I've got one servo hooked up and the motor of course is hooked to the ESC. So let's do a quick test here. Um, first of all let's just check the servo. I'm going to move the uh, aileron stick over here so you can see the aileron servo is working. And let's try the motor. So that's that motor. Now let's see what the other motor sounds like. I just removed the motor from uh, BevRC and I'm going to go ahead and put on this uh, prop drive 35 from um, Hobby King and it's got a shaft sticking out the back it mounts a little bit differently you have this hardware here that you mount on the on the bell of the motor to put the prop on and then the shaft is sticking out the back but it'll just go in the hole like that and mount right on there okay let's compare the Hobby King uh, prop drive 35 to this this other motor here from BevRC. Alright. So there we go, and aileron servo still works. So everything looks like it's working pretty good so far. So now that the LRS, or Long Range Control System, is installed in the Skywalker plane, we're going to move on to the next video where we're going to be installing the ArduPilot Mega 2.6 and testing the functionality of that. So stay tuned and see you next time.